In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create your very own custom mobile drop down menu using containers on Elementor. Now, I have done a video on this in the past using sections, but many of you guys have requested that I recreate this video using containers. So I'm going to do just that. This is what we're going to be creating here. As you can see, whenever I click my hamburger icon there, we're going to have this drop down. This is a complete custom drop down. So you guys can pretty much add anything to this drop down. If you want to add another button, you can a longer menu, even icons in here, you can it's going to work very smooth, as you can tell here. Um, now it does work. Now that was just tablet right there. Now, as you can see, it works on mobile perfectly. And it's also sticky as well. So if I bring it down, it works just fine, as you can see. And that's basically what we're going to be creating. And for those of you that have never created header using containers, I uploaded recently a video that's going to show you how to create a header using containers. So please watch that video first before you go ahead and get started on this. That's going to really set you guys up and um, it's going to help you out. Hopefully you guys end up enjoying the video. If you do, make sure to like it for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. I hope you enjoy. Let's go ahead and begin here. Log into your WordPress dashboard. Make sure that you have Elementor and Elementor Pro installed. Now, go to your templates, go to Theme Builder, and then go ahead and create your header. Now, I've already created my header, and I actually did it in one of my last videos where I showed you guys how to create a header using containers. Now, I recommend you follow along on that video and you get your header created because we're going to be using that header there. But just in case you want to just replicate my header real quick, let me go ahead and go over it. So I have a container here with a logo on the left and a container on the right. And I have the, this main container set to a row. Inside my um, inner container, I have a WordPress menu, as you can see here, and then I just have a button. And that's pretty much it. And I also have this container set to row. And I have it set to, I believe, um, I have the justify content to the end and I have it, um, items, align item center. So let me go ahead and shrink this here. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do once you have this set up is we need to have two, two inner containers inside our main container. Currently we just have a logo and then a container. So let's grab our container here and put it inside um, our main container, and we're going to drag and drop our logo in it. There we go. So as you can see, we have a container and inside that we have two inner containers. I'm going to be calling my inner containers column. So we have our first column and our second column just to simplify things. Um, so one thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make my first column. I'm going to shrink my first column just because I want to give my second column a little bit of more space, just because I don't want my, um, menu to wrap here whenever we uh, shrink um, our screen or if someone has a smaller screen size. Um, that's always super important to do. So let's click on our first column. And let's set this to full width. Make sure it's set to a percentage. Percentage here and we're just going to bring it down. Uh, probably to around this size should be fine. And as you can see, our second column is going to expand, which is great. Um, let's make our logo bigger. Click on your logo here. Go into advanced, make sure you set it to custom. Custom, I know that currently you'll probably have it at default and you'll see it like this, but we want to set it to custom. And we want to set it to about, you know, this height, this width should be fine. The reason is because we want to add our icon in here, um, our hamburger icon. So let's go ahead and drag our hamburger icon inside. Go into your elements, search for the image. So we're going to be using an image instead of an icon element. And I know that in one of my last videos where I showed you guys how to create this uh, mobile menu here, I ended up using a icon element. And I know that some of you guys were having issues with that. So instead, I'm using an image element now. And I actually have um, instead of using the CSS to change the icon or to even display the, the hamburger icon and the clothes icon, I'm going to be using, I'm just going to be adding it to the jQuery just so then it, it works for everyone this time. Cause I knew you guys were having issues with that. So, um, let's go ahead and drag our image element in here. Let's make sure that it's set under the logo. 
click on our first column, set this to row. There we go. Click on your image. And let's go ahead and drag and drop our icons here, our hamburger icon and our clothes icon. Now, in order to download these icons here, go to fonts.google.com, go to icons, and we're going to be using this the menu icon here. Go ahead and download that, click SVG, and then the close. Click SVG here on the bottom right. In case you can't see it, let me try to... Um, should be actually uh, let me just move this real quick so you guys can see it it's right it's right here guys so this is where you guys can download it that's what where you guys are going to need to download it okay so once you have that downloaded you can go ahead and upload it here in case you're having any issues uploading svgs i recommend that you install an svg plugin um, go into your plugins search for svg and then go ahead and install either the first or the second SVG plugin that you see. That will allow you to upload SVGs in case you're having that issue. So I'm gonna just upload mine here. There we go. I'm gonna use a hamburger icon, which is gonna be good. Or the menu icon, we can call it. Um, that's fine. So for right now, let's go to advance on the image and let's just hide this on desktop because we only want this icon to show on desktop, right? There we go. So, uh, sorry, we only want it to show on tablet and mobile, I should say. You can see desktop is still looking good. Now let's go ahead and start the fun stuff. Let's go into tablet and let's click on our first column here. And actually, you know what? Something that we want to do before we do that, let's click on our main container and then set this to wrap. There we go. Now we have it top to bottom. Um, click on your first column and on full width, set this to 100. There we go. Now something that I don't like is the spacing here that we have. Let's go ahead and remove the spacing on our main container here, or I should say the padding. We should remove the padding on our main container. So our main container, click on that, go to advance, and then check this so we can do it to all of them and set it to zero. There we go. Um, now let's click on our column, first column in here. Let's add this to space between. Oops, sorry, not space around. Space between. There we go. Now we have our logo on the left and our menu icon on the right. Now click on your menu icon here on your image element and then make sure you align this to this, this center. Now we could, what we could do as well is we could just go to the container and do the same thing here. That will work anyway, so that's fine. Let's just do it on the container level. Okay, so now that's looking good. Now we need to go ahead and actually remove the gap that we have right here. You see that we have this gap. So let's click on our main container. Let's go into layout. And let's set the gap here to zero. Perfect. Now, something that we want to do here is we want to go ahead and set this to wrap as well. But before we do that, we do need to remove some um, some settings that we may have added in the previous video. So let's click on our button here, go to advance, and make sure that we don't have um, the size here of grow selected. This or else it will not work. So make sure this is unchecked. If this is checked like this, it's probably not gonna work. So don't do that. And then same thing here. Let me just check my menu here, make sure that we don't have that. Okay, perfect, that's great. And then something that I do wanna do though is, is let's remove the order here and just leave it the default, that's fine. Okay, now let's click on our button. And while we're here, we can go to content um, sorry, go to advance and the width set it to full width. That's fine. Now we can go ahead and set it to wrap. So let's click on our container here. Sorry, on our second column, I should say. And then let's go and set this to wrap. Here we go. Go back to our button. Go to content, alignment, 
and I set this to justify. There we go. Now it's going to take up the entire space. Now I don't really want to have um, a border radius on here on my button. So let's go into style on your button and set the border radius to zero just by clicking this. Um, just by clicking this, everything will be set to zero. That's perfect. Now let's go ahead and adjust our menu. Um, so click on this, go to content, and then remove the full width. We don't need that anymore. Make sure it's, you, you select your, uh, your nav menu, set it to horizontal, pointer none. And you can have a pointer if you want, but I recommend you don't. Uh, Breakpoint should be tablet. Full width should be, uh, you should just remove that to no. And then we are, we're going to center this. And then this is where the magic happens. Toggle button, we're going to do none. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to go into advanced here with full width. There we go. Now that works perfectly. Okay. Now we see that's looking good. In case you want to make any adjustments to this, you can. Um, you can click on your menu there, go to style, and you can adjust it accordingly if you want to. You can expand the spacing and all that stuff. Um, sorry, not this one. Uh, it'd probably be more, uh, you know what, it's your drop down. Sorry about that. Go into your drop down. That would be more on um, desktop. So we can adjust, adjust the horizontal if we need to, the vertical. Um, you don't really need to adjust the horizontal because we already have it set to the middle, so that probably won't work, but you can definitely adjust this if you need to. So, And you can basically add anything to this drop-down menu. If you want to add any more, you know, another button, you can. Maybe we want to duplicate this. You can just add another one as well for mobile. So you can really just do anything with it. You want to maybe add a, another container with uh, icons inside of it. As an example, um, let me see if I can, but yeah, obviously you can. There we go. So now we have that one. Yeah, it's inside. You want to go ahead and maybe add like a, an icon in there as well. And you want people to select like the icons in the drop down. you know, maybe like a login thing. However you would like, really. Um, if you wanted to, you know, set it up like that, you can really do anything with it. But just for this example, this is the drop down we're gonna that we're gonna have. So now let's click on our second column, and this is more gonna be called our navigation column or our nav container because it's it's holding all of our navigation here. But let's first go on desktop and make sure everything's looking good on desktop. Okay, as we can see, we still have everything looking good. Um, let's go ahead and click on our second column. Go to custom CSS. Actually, before we do that, let's give this a CSS class of nav dash container on your layout settings. Now let's go into um, CSS here. Do dot nav dash container. Now I know I can use selector. But since I'm going to be using this CSS class on my jQuery, I might as well do it this way. So let's do curly brackets and let's do display of none. But if we end up checking on desktop, we won't see our menu anymore. So we only want to apply this to tablet and mobile. So let's set up a media query. So above this, let's do at media oval brackets there. Let's do max width so basically the max width that we want this to work um, anything below this will activate our style here so anything below 1024 which is a max that we want this to work 1024 pixels 1024 is basically our tablet breakpoint there so we're going to go ahead and copy this and then paste it inside there we go just like that now i will have this on my website anyway so you guys can just paste this if you need to Okay, so as we can see, it's working great and on mobile as well. The only thing is our icon here is not going to really do anything. But before we add our jQuery here, let's click on our menu icon there. Even here, you can click on it. And we want to give this a class. We want to call it nav-icon. Let's hit update. 
Now let's open up another window to add our code. We don't necessarily need this one anymore, so I could have just cleared that one. Let's go to the dashboard. Let's go to Elementor custom code. Now, in case you don't have Elementor Pro, you could add the custom CSS here um, in the customizer that I added on here. I think I added it on this here. You can add this in the customizer. And then our custom code, you can use um, a code snippet plugin. Okay, so let's do add new. And let's leave this on the body end. You can even do head if you guys need to. Um, but body end, I always prefer. So now let's go ahead and name this um, mobile drop down menu. Now let's paste my jQuery that I have here. Um, we need to go ahead and add our icon URLs. So this should be our menu icon and then our close icon. I should probably call this menu icon, um, but I would have to go ahead and, and um, adjust the variables on here. So I'm just gonna leave it at open icon for now. Um, so let's grab those URLs. So we have our menu icon, which is our open icon. Oops. Let's go ahead and paste it in here. I'm gonna remove the domain here, the main name, just because in case we have this on a staging site and if we move this to a live site, we still want this to work. So let's leave it at that. Now let's go ahead and grab our close icon here, close icon URL, and let's paste it in here. Same thing, remove the, um, the URL here. And we still want the, still want it to look just like this. Okay, so we have the slash there and then WP slash and then WP content and then whatever the file is. All right, so now that's looking good. I'm gonna go over the code towards the end of the video um, just in case some of you guys just wanna paste this and get this working right away. So let's hit publish entire website because we do have our header running on the entire website. And now let's test this. Let's go and preview this. And there we go. As you can see, it's working. Let's even go to um, the main site here. You can see it's going to drop it down. And we actually already have it to sticky. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do that in case you guys haven't done that yet. But we can see we can even bring it down here and it works the exact same thing. Now, if I, if I were to open this and then move it around, it will close automatically, which is great. In case someone's, you know, adjusting this and really checking out your site and seeing how you developed it, it's always good to have this. There were like some bugs. Oops, I think there was a bug right there. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and see what's going on here with that. It's good I caught that. I, I don't think it's set up on mobile. Let's just check it out. I think I think I know why. Yeah. So let's, let's, before we do that, let's um, go back here. Let's on display that, there we go. And then let's just set it to a wrap. That's all we gotta do. So head over to your, your main container here and then set this to, she is currently set to no wrap. All we gotta do is just set it to wrap. So our main container holding our entire header, set that to wrap and that's it. So we gotta do that. Let's go back to our container here, custom CSS. And let's make sure that we have this um, live now. So we just had to comment it out so we could actually see it because obviously we weren't able to see it. Um, you could just delete it and then paste it back. That also works too. So you can see your, um, your menu there. Okay, so now it should be working perfectly. There we go. Okay, now something that I did do in the past is I think I did give this button some custom CSS actually. Um, let me click, let me go back here and I believe I gave this a media query in here of a display none for this width. That's something just more custom when it comes to the header, but you can watch my um, header container video to go over that. I'm gonna uncomment that out now because I don't need it anymore. Um, and now we can see that we'll have our header there, our uh, button I should say. There we go. Perfect. 
everything's working it's just fine in case you want to make the sticky by the way um click on your header go into advance motion effects hit top um have it work for pretty much all these um, breakpoints desktop tablet and mobile uh, if you want to add an offset you can but it's not really necessary um and then just hit update and that's it okay so for those of you guys that want to go ahead and learn about the code um, in case you guys want to go ahead and maybe adjust it a little bit, uh, let me go over it. So um, we have a you know a script tag, so we can add our scripts in here. Um, we have a const variable of jQuery, just a shortcut, so we don't got to write out the entire jQuery here. Um, we just have that variable there, and then we just have a variable of my open icon URL, and then a variable of my close icon URL, just so then we can use this all around and I don't got to keep pasting the same URL just redundant I only like using I only like pasting the same thing once so just makes it just more optimized okay and then right here we just have a loader and we're pretty much just waiting for the HTML document to load um, once the HTML document is loaded and it's ready we're gonna run this function here and this function is gonna wait for um, a click um, and specifically a nav icon click so basically our um our icon here it's going to wait for us to click this or any visitor to click that once that is clicked it's going to run this function here it's we're going to have an if statement and the if statement's going to check if um the nav container here the nav container is visible so if this is clicked and obviously um once this is visible and it will be visible because we have our uh, slide toggle here. If it is visible, then we pretty much want it to have the close icon there. And that's what it's doing. So, um, or I should say the open icon. If it is visible, um, it should have the open icon there. Um, if that makes sense. Okay. And then basically, if it's not visible, um, it should have the close icon, right? So hopefully that kind of explains it. Um, basically, it's like pretty much saying if the icon, the container here is visible, go ahead and, sh and uh, show the close icon. If it's not visible, um, go ahead and show the, the open icon. Um, that's pretty much how that should be working there. Um, so then, yeah. Once, once that goes through, um, we pretty much here, we go ahead, but it is a little bit different because like basically what it does is if it's not visible, it's going to go to this one first. It's a little bit backwards, but, um, that's just how I have it, have it working anyway. So basically it, on the first click, it'll probably go to this one. Um, and then it'll toggle this as well. And then after that, it'll probably go here and then here again. Um, but that's just how I have it working and it works perfectly. It works fine. Um, so that's how that works. Um, this one is just a jQuery that will pretty much slide, um, slide toggle our menu. So basically display our menu, but as it displays, it'll kind of slide it down, you know? So it just doesn't just appear right away. Um, and I have a duration of 200 for those of you guys wondering there. Um, and then right here, we have a, um, we're running a variable um, and we're targeting the window object here. And we're pretty much um, waiting for a, a resize on resize was just a method um, of a resize. And then once we we notice that the window is getting resized, we're going to run this function. And the function is first going to check if we're on the Elementor editor. If we're on the Elementor editor, then it's going to return and it's not going to move forward. But if we're not on the Elementor editor, then it's going to run this this um, function here. And basically, it's gonna. There's a variable of this, which is just getting um, this this window, and then um, th that variable allows us to access some uh, methods here. And we have uh, we have an if statement, and we're accessing the width of here. And basically, we're checking if the width of the screen is greater than 1024. If it is greater than 1024, which basically means if it's on desktop, um, we want the the nav container to show. Because if we go to desktop here, this nav container should always show here. If we if we were to expand this, let's say you you close this out, right? And then we go back, we wouldn't really see our 
you know, our menu here. And that's just for those that are, you know, adjusting the resize. Most of the time people would just have a set resize, have a set size on their screen, whenever they view it on mobile, on their phone or tablet. No, most people won't be adjusting it like this, but I have that there, you know, just in case. So, um, anyone's resizing the window or something like that, you know, um, you don't want your website to look glitchy. That's why I have it set up like that, just to kind of make your, your, uh, your menu there look, look responsive. Um, and then if, if it's not greater than 1024, we know that um, it's basically tablet or mobile. We want it to run this. And basically, this will go ahead and um, add the the open icon here, which is going to be the menu icon. It's going to show this, this menu icon. And then it's going to um, go ahead and hide the container, right? So that's pretty much why it's it's doing this. So whenever we open it and then we move it, you see that it closes back. That's why, because it's running that that code, so it basically closes it, and then adds the the, the menu icon there, and that's pretty much how that works. Um, if you guys have any questions on this, just feel free to reach out. I know you guys had issues in the past with this, but hopefully, I did resolve some of you guys' bugs, and the icons are um, are working now, and you guys are not gonna have that issue anymore. And this is in my opinion, a much more simplified way than the last version that I was doing with the sections, I feel like. Now, if you are using sections, you can technically do it this way as well. Um, you may just need to adjust the code a little bit, but I recommend using containers because containers are so much easier in my opinion, but maybe that's just because I'm more of um, a developer and I've been using Flexbox for years and it just comes natural to me. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure to like for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. As always, thanks for watching.